And we are live once again, another Tuesday night. Hey guys, thanks uh, thanks for joining again tonight. Greatly appreciate it. You know, as, as most of you know, you know, I, I love to do different things with different brands, different whiskeys, you know, other whiskey channels, all of that stuff. So for me, I think it's an important, you know, platform for us to allow other people, other companies, you know, whatever it may be, the opportunity to, to kind of help get their, their name out even more, talk a little bit more about, you know, kind of what the brands and, and all of that are, are about, what's behind them, how they started, where they're going, all of that. So for me, this is a, a really fun thing to, to do. And uh, I'll, I, I'm, I'm hoping you guys really get something good out of, out of tonight. So before we get going, let me, uh, let me say hi to a bunch of the guys that were in here a little bit before. So Trevor, how's it going, buddy? Good to see you, Josh. I know Josh is a, a big fan of, um, of short barrel. So that that's pretty awesome. Cameron, how's it going, buddy? Kelsey, good to see you. Uh, Roy, how's it going, bud? Sugar Kitty, good to see you. Sherry, good to see you as well. Thanks for jumping in. Appreciate it. Hendo, another Georgia boy. So I know, I know Hendo will know a little bit more about the, uh, the guys at short barrel. So, um, Brett, how's it going, Brett? Top dog. Good to see you. Big Vic. Cameron, I already said, Hey Adam, how's it going? JG, good to see you. Okay guys. So here's what we'll do. Um, I'll bring Clinton on here in a second and we're just going to have fun tonight. This again, you know, um, is something I wanted to, after kind of learning a little bit more and kind of, you know, maybe knowing a little bit of the backstory, it was kind of interesting. And I wanted you guys to, to kind of see and, and hear from some people. So I'll bring, uh, I'll bring Clinton on here in a second and, uh, and we'll get going and, and we'll let him kind of tell the story of, of short barrel. I think you guys will be pretty, pretty interested. So let me, uh, let me bring him on here and uh, we will get going right now. Clinton, my man, how's it going, buddy? Good. How are you? Not bad. Not bad. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Cheers, everyone. Oh, look at this. Already, uh, already flexing with the short barrel. So. Nah, there's, not, there, there's, there's no flexing involved tonight. Just don't, what, don't, don't, look, don't look what's behind me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think part of that will be, will be the, uh, the interesting story of the hows and whys and, and all of that. So, um, you know, again, thanks for joining, you know, and, well, nice and this was me. like, I had mentioned before, um, you know, this is one of the things I like to do with like this platform is like basically you and I, we're just going to chew the fat tonight a little bit, learn a little bit more about you, the other guys involved, you know, short barrel, the story and all of that. And, and hopefully people get a, a good idea of what it is you guys are, are doing the passion you have, um, you know, for, for whiskey and the brand and, and all of that. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, to hearing more about that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd um, all right. So, no, no, sorry. Go ahead. So yeah, I'll just uh, kind of give everybody a backfill. I heard heard a few people that you're talking to know Short Barrel a little little bit here in Atlanta, maybe online, maybe you've seen my bearded face somewhere on Instagram or something like that. So Short Barrel is kind of you know one of those things where we started as a picking group late 2016 uh, or actually 2015, early 2016. Adam, who uh, Adam Dorfman started a bourbon picking group he basically showed up at a liquor store and went to the uh basically went to the owner and said hey you know who does your picks the owner basically said they just send the samples or i do them he said well hey let me do them kind of started kind of start snowballing effect where since then we have picked over 350 different barrels of spirits so we've done rums arm and x we've done tequilas gone to Mexico to do tequilas. We've basically been to, I think, every distillery humanly possible at this point in Kentucky and really just started having a fun, fun with it. You know, we kind of built a name for ourselves a little bit. Guys would camp out, you know, for different things. And basically we kind of just went with it and became a picking group where last year we kind of, during COVID, we were actually, uh, yeah, go Braves. I see it down there. Uh, <laughs> you know, actually you can probably see my jock, uh, you know, little pearls right there. Yeah. Uh, but basically last year we were, we were in Kentucky in July, everything was shut down. It was Sunday. So it was me, Patrick, and a few other guys basically just said, you know, let's go out and have some fun. Um, one thing maybe lead to, to the next, we're going to go ahead and keep this really PG. Some drinks might've been heavily involved. <laughs> and yeah, we decided to start a bourbon company. We met, uh, we, we met, ended up meeting a barrel broker up there that basically said, Hey, I'm going to call you tomorrow. We're like, oh yeah, sure. Great. Call us. We'll buy barrels. Well, he called 
and we decided to go ahead and uh, wire some random stranger, not really random. We, we ended up meeting and hanging out with him that day, some money. And we bought some, uh, some Barton barrels at the time, which we would have bought a lot more knowing what we know now and basically decided to launch a bourbon company. So we bought them. Uh, basically they went into storage up there. We thought starting a bourbon company was going to be the easiest thing in the world. We didn't know that she needed, you know, a bunch of lawyers and you know, yeah. licensing. And it took us about nine months actually to really be able to dive into and understand, you know, what, what it takes to start a bourbon company, what the ATF needs, what, what basically yeah. TV needs. Really, we failed so many different ways possible to the point <laughs> where we thought we could do this ourselves. We have a really great legal team now that we basically have. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're kind of rolling. Um, we started back in March this year. So it took us really from July to March to kind of get where we're at. We launched our, uh, Kind of first single barrel product. I know a lot of you guys probably tuned in are going to watch this. Have had this. Um, these this was Barton sourced. We finally basically went through sixteen different barrels. Found six that were really good. If I told you it was Barton, you'd probably be like Clinton. You've probably been drinking too much, but it is Barton. <laughs> it is their high rye. Um, these are sold out. Unfortunately, if you're in Atlanta, there are still a few floating around. Jack's uh, Jack's Beverage Superstore up near Buford has still has a couple of their single barrels left, but not too many. Kind of went from there, which led into our 15-year product, which I you know a lot of you guys probably seen online. This thing's been floating around. Super proud of this one. This actually won a gold medal this year, which we'll get into later. Um, and then what you have right there is kind of our batch three, batch four um, type thing. So that is our that is our newest release. It is a blend of five five year and older MGP rye. Uh, MSR, MSRP is $59.99 on that. Super proud. Um, I was kind of chatting with Scott before we jumped on here. That was originally supposed to be like a blend of rye. Like we have 13 and 14 year old Canadian rye barrels that we're kind of just hanging out with right now. We were going to do this really cool blend. We all talked about it. We tasted it. Well, there's a reason there's only MGP in that bottle. Yeah. So, you know, that's kind of, that's kind of where it is. And the backstory of short barrels too is like, I work full time. Um, I actually work in finance. Patrick Lemon, who's another partner, works in, works in finance full time. Adam Dorfman, I think is tuned in here. Owns a direct sales company. So we're, really not your your typical bourbon company per se we don't have distillery you know we're out there basically tasting other people whiskey putting our name on it and if it's not good uh we're not going to basically put our name on it it's just it's just yeah. not going to happen that's not our thing you know yeah we, we love sales and we love selling to people and out here talking about the brand but if it's not good there's no reason for us to put our name on it. it's kind of where yeah. we're at well, and that's the thing. I mean, I mean, I guess to to that point there. I mean, you guys know from from starting out as a barrel picking, you know, club and some guys that do all that. You know, if you start putting your name on things that are just straight trash to to try to make a few bucks, and you know, maybe it, it works probably in the short term, but the long long term, it's it's not well, going to work. So. I actually have a funny story about that. Um, Adam, who um, basically he has a really funny story. We actually were in Buffalo Trace last week, and we told the story again. Adam's probably the only person I know that's ever sent 12 samples of Eagle Rare back. Basically, <laughs> we the samples were so bad. So you guys will see some rumors out there that, hey, this Eagle Rare is a Mashable number two pick. Well, we have them. They're all right there. We basically, we got to the point there with them a few years ago. They, they got so mad at us that they basically rolled out a private stash. And it, their Eagle Rare was so good. They actually submitted it for Whiskey of the Year. One of, really? one of our picks that we did, yeah. So really kind of funny story about some about some Eagle Rare picks and just kind of like our palettes and say no. You know, that's one thing I think that's kind of not necessarily wrong with the industry right now, but there's just too many people saying yes to crappy whiskey just to throw yeah. some wax or a sticker on it just because yep. it's cool. Guys, it's it's okay if it's bad. If it needs some more time, yep. like we, we don't have the luxury right now saying, hey, let's roll out another one. But other brands do if your samples aren't good send them back. Like you don't, you don't yeah. want to get off to just to basically say, how oh, awesome. My name's on a barrel. Like it's a cool feeling. I still love it every single time we do. And it's all even cooler to have your name on a brand, but yeah. like say no, like it, it, no one's going to be upset with you. Yeah. And, and we, we've already been down that road. And that was one of the things Jason and I said, we're just not going to put a sticker on it with our name on it. And it'd be garbage. Like it's got to be good to the point where we want to drink it and enjoy it. And, and yeah, we're not just going to, you know, put it in a bottle to, to put it in a bottle that that's for sure. for sure. But, you know, I mean, I think that's kind of, I mean, if we go back to the, the, the beginning for, for you guys, I mean, starting out as, you know, a, a bunch of guys that, you know, who all have, you know, let, let's just say, I mean, you, most, I think most of the guys in groups that do these kind of, you know, 
picks, these, these barrel clubs, you know, I mean, I think they, a lot of them have, you know, pretty, pretty darn good palates. So it says a lot about, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it says a lot about what you guys are. Cause I mean, I think it takes some confidence to want to even get, get into that part of it. So, I mean, I think for you guys, knowing that you started out there, you already are where, where we want to be from the standpoint of you're not just going to put that stuff in a bottle just for the, for the sake of a sale. You know, you, you want it to represent, you know, not only the brand, but you guys behind it as well. So, yeah. yeah. And I mean, it, 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 and it's, it's just one of those, like I said, I was getting at this, you know, bourbon's getting younger, <laughs> rice are getting younger. I mean, yeah. I know what's on the source market right now. And I know what's like sitting out there is like, don't be surprised at some of these samples that people are basically coming out. I mean, there's stuff that's two and a half, three years old. Yeah. That's drinkable. It's good. You're going to taste a lot of the corn in it. Yeah. But it's, you know, everybody wants to talk about, you know, you know, the whiskey market and kind of where it's at and everything. There's a lot of young whiskey. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm saying yeah. in the next two, three years, there's going to be some really good whiskey on the market. But right now what brands are buying up, it's two and a half, three year old whiskey. And they're just praying they can either one toast it, finish it in something crazy and let it do it for, you know, six months. And hey, we're going to wax this thing, throw a sticker on it and just yeah. see what happens and, you know, yeah. send it to our distributor to make some cash. And that's really not, that's really not our game plan. So, you know, we'll kind of talk a little bit more what we have in the future and everything else, but it's, yeah. it, it is, it is a dry market right now. So this is kind of a little behind the scenes thing. If you guys see anything with age right now that you enjoy, even MGP, if you enjoy it, it's five, six, seven years old, buy it. Don't, yeah. don't wait. Cause there's, you know, I mean, you know, to, to that, to, you know, and that's the thing to, to that point, you know, like even if you start looking at like, for instance, as example, like the, like the Remus five that they launched, I mean, minimum 13 years, upwards of 16 year, you know, some really nice mash bills in there. And, and you know, and people want to say, ah, I don't know, 90, hundred bucks, whatever. I say, you're crazy. Yeah. I say you're crazy because I mean, that stuff is just, you can't, you can't produce that stuff tomorrow or nope. a year from now. I mean, that stuff is it's just not there. And you know, I'm telling you something you already know, but no, I'm just telling, I'm telling like everybody tuning in, like, don't yeah. like when you see these things, even if you don't open it right away, even if you use it as trade bait in the future, you know, whatever, wherever it is, like, don't sit on this stuff because unfortunately we're going to go through a pretty, I think with all the issues of supply chain and glass and like everything, I think next year and maybe even the 2023 is going to be a very interesting time in whiskey where we yeah. just, you know, you're going to see stores that are are bare, especially some of your smaller mom and pops. Yeah. Everything else is because brands are struggling right now, one, to get glass and distributors are, are, are struggling to find truck drivers. When this is kind of like kind of the bite behind the scenes stuff is like, you know, we sent a PO to our distributor. It might take three, four weeks to really get in their system and do everything. And, you know, it's six weeks after that we bottled something and that's yeah. just us. I and mean, we're small, let alone everybody else. I mean, it's, Guys, we're in for a we're in for a serious kind of little slowdown yeah. next. Week. It, it's coming. Well, and that's the thing, you know. You know, there's a lot of you know those whiskeys where I think you know we've all gotten so kind of almost spoiled with some of this age whiskey that now you know you start getting into you know four, five, six year you know whiskey, and and people are like almost referring to that as like young whiskey. And like, man, you, you let's, call that, let's call that middle aged right now. Yeah. Like now, I mean, I think that's the thing I, and I think, you know, we've, we've all become so spoiled with that, that you really almost need to take a step back and realize, you know, Hey, you're, you're for the most part, not going to have a six year, you know, bourbon or whatever, you don't know, taste like a 12 or 15 year old bourbon. It just, it just generally speaking, not the case. So I think people have to really understand and appreciate, you know, what brands like you are, are doing with the whiskeys that are available. So I, I think, and here's where I'll say like the blending part comes in. So if you're batching things outside of single barrels, of course, you know, this is where the magic is happening with those barrels. Now you've got to rely on these blenders to kind of do the, to do the magic and, and really work off of what those, you know, five, six, seven, maybe eight year, eh, maybe eight, you don't see a whole lot of eight, it seems like, but no, you know, there, there's, there's some eight-year-old rise. I know National Barrel, National Barrel Company out there. Those guys are awesome. They have um, they have some eight-year-old, nine, nine-year eyes hitting right now. But yeah. you guys hit it. Blending is the key to a lot right now. And if I opened my drawers behind me, you would see so many sample bottles and everything else. Yeah. It's kind of like what we're doing and trying to figure out. You know, I think, 
you know, I don't, don't, don't necessarily want to say kind of the key to everything right now is to kind of finish stuff off and kind of let it do its thing. But that's that's kind of what people are doing. I just saw um, Coming Whiskey on Instagram yesterday. Check that guy out basically every day. Yeah. You know, I yeah. saw Old Forester is coming out with a non-age state of product. All our stuff is. But they basically put it in a toasted barrel for six months. Extreme, in my mind, immediately, it was like, it's probably like a two, three-year-old whiskey. They just basically decided to toast. And it's yeah. not, I have nothing wrong with that. I actually think, I think Old Forester at four years old is great. Um, you know, kind of their mash bill, it shows well. And that's what a lot of the whiskey is. But that's kind of what we're going to see over the next couple of years is a lot of, a lot of blending, you know, a lot yeah. of, you know, a lot of, like, like I talked about a rye. We had full intentions of taking a 13, 14 year old Canadian rye and taking it with MGP. They just didn't play very well together. But we're doing some stuff. You know, the rye has been blended. We have a lot of bourbon that's going to be blended. Our, our bourbon that we bought is a little younger right now. I'll talk about that later. But yeah. a honey product coming out. We basically were able to source a bunch of uh, honey or not honey, but um, f- five and a half year old American whiskey, which I think is going to be a new trend, too. And we have that in honey cask right now in Kentucky. Yeah. And we tasted it last week. And, you know, and it's, it's a big and I'll be full transparency. With it. it's, it's a fear of mine is like. Is it is it too light? Even though it's really good, I think American whiskey is going to be a really good you know kind of trend moving forward. But you know, as a new startup, I was like, how's the bourbon community going to react to? No one's ever done American whiskey finished in a honey barrel, and yeah, yeah. we're doing 132 proof, which will be a super limited edition online and here in Georgia. I think about 400 bottles and a 101 proof. That's feedback we're hearing. A lot of people were kind of shying away from a lot of this kind of barrel proof stuff and that we all enjoy but we don't but a lot of people don't realize is the barrel proof market is less than five percent of what people are drinking on a daily basis yeah well and that's and that's a good that's a good point i mean i i think as much as people want you know especially like picks you know everyone was always gravitating towards just give me big and bold high number barrel proof this and that but i, I would agree i mean 95% of the time, I'm not drinking that stuff. I mean, it's it's on occasion, you know, or the weekends or whatever it may be. But, you know, nightly, you know, like yours, 101 proof. I mean, that's a really nice, really nice proof on a on a whiskey from a from an everyday standpoint for people who have, you know, some experience drinking whiskey. I think that's a really, really well, nice. Proof that, that was kind of one of the things that I got some funny stories on the proof. Um, uh, you, you know, when, when we were first out doing this stuff, especially when you know, our, our first bottles came out, you know, th- this is a, this is 124.8 proof. You you're standing in a liquor store anywhere and trying to spend or sell 124.8 proof to anybody. Yeah. That's not a like experienced bourbon shrieker. They're going to look at you and basically look like you just tried to serve a Bacardi 151. <laughs> yeah. And that's kind of some of the feedback we've got is like, you know, it's it really, we, we did it. Uh, I live here at just North of Atlanta, about 15 minutes from downtown. We actually did an art, uh, art gallery event about three or four weeks ago. And Patrick, who we had to basically warn everybody that was there. And it's a little bit older, older crowd, no problem at all. We're like, Hey, it's a, it's one-on-one proof. Like we're just warning you because I know what one-on-one proof to a casual, you know, maybe a basil Hayden strength or 80 proof. It will, it will light you on fire and you don't yeah. want to like feel it where it just sits with you. So, you know, yeah. even at one four, even at one fourteen seven proof, which our 15 year is like, we still warn people of like, Hey, it's got some proof in it. Like we just want to warn you because not everybody is drinking barrel proof every day. And I think yeah. that's one of the things that we've all come accustomed to is like, give me the highest proof possible. Like Jack Daniels, Coy Hill right there. 142.1 yeah. proof. You might, you, know. you might like, like, Get given one of those things yeah. to someone that has never drank, you're basically going to ruin their palate for the next yeah. week and a half. They're not going to taste anything. Yeah. And you're, you're not going to be able to bring them back into your brand. So we've played a lot with proof and just different things. And we that's why we settled on the 101. 101 holds up well in a cocktail, great with a cube. And if you're on a fire, sipping it neat, it's just like yeah. a perfect proof. There's a reason Wild Turkey yeah. does it. A lot of other brands are at 101. Yeah, it's a, it's a solid one. Yeah, I mean, when you get into those... Yeah, you know, and again, like you talk about the barrel proof stuff. I mean, it's such an ultimately a small part of the market who wants those big, those big numbers, big and hot and heavy and all of that. You know, it's just not something. I mean, I mean, I would argue with people who say they're going to drink this stuff like on the regular. I, I, I'd probably challenge whether or not you're really drinking it as much as like you're not sitting down every day with like a Elijah Craig barrel proof or something. You just can't, you just can't do that. You Look, know, I've, I've had, I've had, I've had a lot of whiskey in my life. I've been doing this for a long time. You know, started 
but I, I agree with you every day. I'll, I love barrel proof as much as the next guy, but if it's just, I want something at night, I'm not grabbing 130 some or 120 sir proof. Realistically, I'm getting older. I have a headache in the morning. I'm just going to be honest. Like it hurts. So I'd rather yeah. drink something I'm going to enjoy. If I had to drop a cube in it, I will. And it's just kind of like where, where, where my palate has just taken me. I was like, I don't want to drink barrel proof every night. It just doesn't yeah. do anything for me. No, that's the thing. You really have to kind of almost be in a, in a mood for that. A lot of times it's just like, you know, most of us I'll say just want that, that bourbon profile. You're not, you're not looking to try to like evaluate a whiskey. And and really at that point, you know, if you're if doing you look that at any brand though, if you look at any Buffalo trace brand, 90 proof, you know, yeah. Elijah Craig, a lot of their brands are 92 proof. There's, yep. you know, you kind of stay in that 90 proof. Granted they're making serious cash from adding water to it. But like, it's just, it's a good everyday thing that I think most people are going to enjoy a lot more. And that's, yeah. you know, we've played around, you know, we, we've we tasted the ride down at 90. And I'm curious to hear your thoughts on it too, by the way. Um, yeah. You know, we, we, we've tasted a bunch of proofs and that that's even why the honey product we have coming out, we, we can't, we, I actually put an Instagram poll up. I was like, what do you want to see? And it was actually like amazing the kind of the PMs we would get or DMs we would get of like. 130 proof sounds great, but I just want something I can drink. So that's why we're like, yeah. heck with it. So we have a honey coming out. Uh, I think in bottles, actually, I think this week. So we have a, we have a 132 proof coming out. It's called uh, the bee's knees. And then the beekeeper is one and one. I might've just swapped those because my marketing brain's not turned on right now. <laughs> yeah. But um, there's going to be a super limited drop. Um, I saw a couple of chats throw, throw here. We are, uh, we can ship to 42 different States, bourbon outfitters, oh. Um, those guys are great. Justin's House of Bourbon, Justin Sloan, and Justin Thomas. Yeah. Um, our Thompson are great, um, great partners of ours that ship for us. So anybody does want to go ahead and buy, um, you know, we, we are online too. Yeah, I'll uh, drop a uh, let me drop a little uh, link in there right now. Just it's on our you. Instagram account too, Short Barrel Whiskey. Uh, I mean, jump on there. It's it's in our bio. Yeah, and you know that's the thing. Going back to this, you know, and I think it's a really good proof. I guess if we talk about this, like for a second, like I, I had to let it warm up because when I went and grabbed it, it was still cold. For sure. So I, I, I had to open it up and kind of get it, like, you know, let this thing open up a little bit and get to some some room temperature. But I think now that it's kind of sat out and and opened up, it's really nice. There's really some nice like citrus notes in it, like really nice spice. Like this oh, is. Yeah. That's great. For me, for me, I would say this is probably with the sweetness. You know, it's not like an overly candy sweet rye or anything, but there's some really nice, um, like spice. Like the the rye in this is is like a focal point. I would say, you yeah, know, it's it, it it shows well, and like I said, you know, holds up great in a cocktail too. Yeah, you know, that that's one thing. You know, that we're I don't want to say we're bougie on cocktails. Adam is one of our partners probably makes one of the best cocktails I've ever had in my life. And I'm going to be honest, it's with Thomas Handy, the BTAC collection, which is really what it's made for. And guys yeah. that have a bottle, I'm telling you, take two two ounces of your BTAC. I know it's a sin. You're supposed to drink it straight. <laughs> Make a cocktail with it really with really good ingredients. And it will, and it will, it will, it will change your mind on like what bourbons are supposed to be. So kind of when we sat down with the rye and had our samples, we had cocktails in mind. Like we're on, we're on several different, um, we're on several different, you know, basically bars down here that are featuring it in cocktails and it holds up so well and bars are loving it because they only have to use an ounce and a half because it's a one on one proof. It's not yeah. a like 90 proof like most. Well, I, I like I like this. I mean, I like something that's got a little like some nice spice, a little bit of oak, you know, and for me, this has like that nice kind of like black peppery kind of finish. Yeah, on it's, it, you know, it's, good. it's got so that, that's one thing with a short barrel profile, too, that you'll that you don't know a lot about us. A lot of guys do, though. We love the long finish where you can yeah. kind of take it sit it down and it's still with you and that's what i think a yeah. lot of people respected about us is like we don't want something that's kind of short quick hitter you know kind of doing its thing we want it to stay with you where you yeah. kind of develop a conversation on the whiskey that you're drinking yeah i mean i think it's really i think it's really nice and it's probably a nice product to have as as part of your your you know overall you know portfolio i'm sure you went in probably thinking we're just gonna hammer away at bourbons and all that but i think mixing in a a nice rye that's not only you know, a, a nice sipping rye that you can still, you know, make a, a really nice, you know, cocktail with. I think that's a, a kind of the, the perfect product, you know, in the yeah. whiskey world. And we tasted some other ryes too. We actually tasted a Kentucky rye, um, the same exact product that Blue Run just launched. We tasted that and kind of the price point, like we kept the consumer in mind, you know, I, I myself, Adam and Patrick, like we, could we overprice things? Yes. Like we could, you know, 
it's really um it's it it, it is what it is but yeah. at 60 dollars for a five six year old mgp rye we thought it was basically spot on for where it should be and we, we kept yeah. it at that and we always will be it is a shelfer for us you know yeah. five is five six year old mgp rye hopefully we just bought a bunch of it we'll be floating around for a while if not we'll, we have some older stock as we're going to progress for single barrels too but it's just it's just a solid rye and we're not trying to hide anything it's mgp yeah. Like yeah. it is what it is. We love to the proof and it's going to always going to be our, our, our staple rye. Well, I mean, I, I think to that point, I mean, it's, it's a nice, it's a nice product to have. I mean, I think you guys have done a, a really nice job with it. It's, <laughs> it's, ser it serves its, its market. I mean, it's, it's a good, it's a really nice price point. So, I mean, I think that's the thing. I mean, you guys, you know, you see like, like for instance, like the 15 year that you guys have, like that price point, I think knowing no, I mean, knowing what it is, you know, without saying what it is, of course, you know, and, and, and having something with age, let's just say, let's just go, let's just default right to the 15 year. Okay. You and I were talking before, there's not much of that around at all. So when you can get that kind of product in the whiskey world for roughly that kind of price, I think nowadays, you know, value is a tough word to, to, to tell people because value is subjective, of course, but the way the way the whiskey world is going and some of these secondary prices on things, you know, it, it's it's crazy. You have to take all of that stuff into consideration. And again, I think your price points on your full lineup is is spot on with that. So, yeah, I mean, the the the, the fifteen years a tough one. I mean, kind of what I didn't what I didn't say in the beginning is like the three of us. We don't have investors. Short Barrel is self financed by Adam, Patrick, and myself. We have very generous wives that basically let, let, allow us to do this thing. But like the 15 year old was, was tough. Like we went back through so many times and internal WhatsApp conversations and different things. And we're just like, guys, like, what is this worth? And, you know, when you add distributors and you add stores and like everything yeah. into it, like we had, we had a very large investment to even buy basically, you know, what it is and to where it's at to basically get in the glass and labor and everything else. Like, yeah, if we could have done it cheaper, we would have. There are brands that have used the same thing and they've proved it down and done it cheaper. And I know how they've done it, but like their, their margins had to be raised, razor thin. And, you know, ours were, ours were thin to, to be honest with you, like basically everything that we we've taken, we've, we, we've been able to basically reinvest. And it's the reason we've been able to lay, lay down so many barrels recently, but like, we just, we just can't seem to kind of get out of that. I, and I don't want to overcharge the market. I really don't. Yeah. Like we're very fortunate. This is not like, hopefully this becomes a, a big thing for us in the next couple of years. And I think it's going to, but like, I, I don't want to charge every, like myself who would walk in the liquor store and basically see, you know, good looking bottle at 15 yeah. years, basically saying, man, that's $300. That's $400. That's a lot. That's a lot. I don't care how much money you make. Yeah. You liquor store. That's a lot of money. You know, well, yeah. 99 retail for us, it was like, guys, like we're still kind of under that $200 price point. You know, there's a lot of other brands that have done it, but it was mm -hmm. an internal struggle. It really truly was yeah. you know, for us because, you know, $200 is like, I know, I know a lot of guys that go into stores and like shop around and everything, but you know, for what it is there, there, there there's not much of that left on the market. You yeah. know, what the, the blue run guys have done with the 13 and 14 year old stuff, which is Barton. There's none of that floating on the market. So any of this age stuff you guys see that you're enjoying, I highly recommend everybody just go ahead and pick it up and grab it because it's not. I mean, it, it's a great, it's a great point. And, and I guess when you put it like in that perspective, you know, let's just call it 200 bucks, you know, for a 15 year, you know, bourbon. And the fact that, that, that there's really none of that stuff around, they pop up here and there, you know, there, there isn't just going to be more 15 year tomorrow or the day, you know, no. but you know, so, and, and where the whiskey market is now, I mean, the, the the days when a hundred dollar bottle was like you gotta be shitting me like no one's gonna pay a hundred dollars for a bottle of bourbon and and it's quickly become the hundred dollar price point is very almost middle of the road let's just call it what it is it's very it's it's not uncommon to have many eighty to one hundred twenty dollar bottles of bourbon anymore well, it just it's, isn't it's extremely you know? common I mean I walk into liquor yeah. I mean I I spend a lot of time in liquor stores obviously and I walk in and I'm like. I, I, I just can't justify this price of like where, especially look, if it's age stated, if it's yeah. six, seven years old, I'll, I'll give it a try, you know, cause I'm kind of used to this pricing, but these non, non age stated brands. Yeah. It's tough to drop that. I mean, it really truly is. And you know, one thing I love about us too is 
you know, I've, I've had guys in liquor stores and different things in Atlanta and be like, I'm standing in a store right now. I see your bottle. Can you tell me about this? And we're it's so Patrick and I share the Instagram. We'll, we'll respond immediately. And we get so many thank yous and we able to convert that way. Just like being an open and honest brand with kind of what it is yeah. and everything else too. But I mean, well, I mean, I mean, yeah, well, I mean the, the awesome, the awesome part about that is, I mean, you guys started out where a lot of us and a lot of the people in the yeah, chat are the right now. We still are there too. I mean, yeah. we were in Kentucky last week. We are very fortunate to go to uh, Buffalo Trace and pick some awesome barrels. We actually got to stay at the Stag Lodge last weekend. But like, hmm. we're still those guys. We unfortunately, not unfortunately, we we had to drop the short barrel for Jack's name um, from the store that we pick here in Atlanta just because it was confusing the brand. But we're yeah. still we're still those guys, and we're always going to be those guys. I love other whiskey. There's a reason you don't see just short barrel behind me. I love <laughs> opening different things and tasting different things yeah. and being, you know, very fortunate in this game that we're in right now to have a store that gets really good picks to be able to, to do these things. I, I love tasting whiskeys and kind of digesting kind yeah. of what they are and thinking about them and taking notes. And it helps my palate with not only owning a brand, but also just like basically being, you know, more connected and in tune what's going on. I mean, yeah. there's a whole entire different, like, I, I'm going to be honest with you. There's a brand right now. A lot of people send me good times. Yeah. Like, I'm impressed with these guys are doing. And I know it's MGP and the color on these yeah. things and crazy stickers, but you know, they're giving yeah. me ideas on kind of what they're finishing and like what they're doing and different things. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, that's pretty cool. They're doing two or three times finishing. That's pretty dang good. So, you know, that, that's kind of the that's fun part of not, not necessarily be where everybody else is, but owning a brand is like, we get to experiment because we have barrels and different things. We're not just limited to samples. But if it's not good, we're just going to blend it out and kind of figure out, yep. you know, or we're going to figure it out. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's the thing. I mean, taking, taking those kind of, you know, age whiskeys and being able to explore that and try some different things, different finishes or whatever it may be. I mean, I, I think that's kind of where we're at. I mean, it's, I mean, I, I think it's ever evolving, you know, the, the world of whiskey. I mean, I think it's always someone trying to push the envelope and whatever that may be. It, the fun part, like, you know, you were talking about before, like finishing a, an American whiskey and, you know, some, some honey barrels or whatever it may be. But, but I think again, having things that are always different and, 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 and unique is what I think a lot of people are kind of starving for now. So I think, you know, like, like the brand you just threw up there before, I mean, some of the finishes that they have on their whiskeys are, are crazy, you know, it's different, it's unique. So you know, I've seen I've seen brands that are starting to experiment with like salted caramel and Tabasco and like all these other crazy crazy finishes and I'm like yeah. I mean at some point though like you know brands are gonna run out first of all brands are gonna run out of things to, to barrel finish in and they're just so many skews I mean it's kind of feedback we've got from our distributor and restaurants here in Atlanta is like you know don't don't overcomplicate your skews don't don't become yeah. a startup and drop ten different skews into the market just because you think they're fun to basically finish because it, it, it is what it is. Like you, you don't, I don't want, I don't want to come to the market and have 12 different products that I've talked about. I want to focus on yeah. th two core products, our rye, our bourbon, and then we're going to have a limited edition every quarter that we're going to kind of play around with and see what happens. Well, you know, like Adam said here, I mean, you take, you look at this, I mean, a six and a half year, 80 bucks, barrel proof, non-chill filtered. I mean, that's, in today's day and age, I would say that's like, I mean, that's a nice price point for what that is. Like sure. that's where, that's where we are. I mean, now for a lot of people or other companies that might be 150 bucks. And I've you know? seen people use the same source, Barton source. Sure. And I've, seen, I've seen them at 110, 120 and they're getting killer reviews. Yep. Like that, that's fine. Um, yeah. But it, you know, it just like, like I kind of leaned on the fort like before. We're still normal guys. We we we're not running a massive distillery with massive overhead and everything else. We just want to put a really good product in the market at a fair price and basically keep enjoying it with everybody else. And that that's really our main mission. Yeah, and that's a good. You know, even Adam mentioned before. So like the American whiskey finished in what it, it is honey barrels, right? Yes, yeah, so they basically took ex bourbon barrels, lined yeah. it honey, and we we bought the we bought those barrels, and we actually have some crazy honey news too. We I mean, 69, 69 bucks. That's a pretty good, that's a pretty good. I mean, I, I, mean, I would have no problem with that. There's brands that are 199 and 169. Like we're just charging what we feel it's worth. And you yep. know, we, so we actually getting on the honey thing. We actually shipped our rye barrels down um, with our, we have batch four rye dropping in Georgia. Should be actually any day, but um, we basically shipped the barrels down. We have a, a local honey farmer taking our barrels, putting his honey in, 
that we're going to basically send back up and have more rye whiskey put back into honey. So that's kind of what we're, what we're really getting into is just kind of a local yeah. play. You know, land has been really supportive of us. So we're trying to basically play on that too. You know, that's kind of interesting. I, I'm trying to think right now if I've even had a rye whiskey that was finished in a honey barrel. I can't think off the top of my head. I can't think of one that I've had. Good Times has done a few. There, okay. there, 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 there's a few that have done them. There, there's Honey's kind of one of those new things. Be Bellmead did a great job. You know what Bellmead's yeah. done, the kind of secondary market. Do I think a Bellmead is worth $800? That's subjective. Um, but, you know, what, what it is, and there's the bourbon. Ours is American whiskey. So, you know, it, it, it's a much different. That's why I think our price point is fair for what it is. It's a yeah. great American whiskey. Super proud. It's it's a ninety one nine mash bill, really good. Um, but it is what it is. It's not a bourbon. Um, we yeah. don't sound like it's a bourbon. We didn't toast it. We didn't add any color. We basically no. put it in a barrel and it's going to come out. It's really good. Yeah. But you know what, Bell what Bellmead's been able to do with the honey, and you've seen other brands too. Like my buddy Chase at New Lou has been able to do some cool stuff. Good Times guys has done. It. Other brands are experimenting with it. But it's just it's also one of those bourbons or whiskeys that you don't go to every night because it picks up the sweetness. So that's kind of what yeah. we're kind of leaning on too. Well, you know, and here's, and here's one thing, you know, so like a lot of, a lot of companies that, you know, may do some of the same or something similar, I, I think it's gotten to the point now where it's for, for a lot of us and, and, and maybe you can, you can kind of, you know, agree or disagree, but I think people are now really starting to attach themselves to a lot more of the people behind the brand. So I think if they know the guys, the ladies, whatever it may be behind the brand and their personalities and, and their, their whiskey abilities, it, it, it adds another layer to that, like to that bourbon or rye or whatever it may be. So, you know, people want to support, you know, what it is you guys are doing. Like for instance, you, know, you guys are, are still doing what, what a lot of us do. You own a brand, but I think people like appreciate that. Like these are guys that are doing a lot of what we do or want to do who happen to own a, a, a whiskey, you know, label. And I think that resonates with a lot of people from the standpoint of like, well, shit, if they're doing a lot of the same things we are, you know, they're not going to stick a bunch of garbage in a bottle just to no. sell the stuff. So we, you know? we actually can't afford to put garbage in the, in the yeah. barrel. Um, you know, that, that's kind of one of those things too is like, you know, Adam Patrick and I are open books. Like we, that's one thing we've strived like from the, this whole entire start is to be fully transparent with everything. Like, mm -hmm. like if you're ever wanting to start your own thing or learn from our failures or just kind of want to pick our brains, like DM us on Instagram. Like, honestly, we, we will tell you exactly how we failed, kind of like what we're doing and everything else. Like I, I hope there's 10 other groups out there that are like, like Clinton, I want to do exactly what we're doing. How do I get started? We'll point you in the right direction. Like you're not competition is one thing it's not like competition when you enjoy what you're doing the, yeah. it's good whiskey the whiskey will sell itself yeah let's hey let's i guess you know from from what you guys have like in your portfolio let's talk a little bit about like your your lineup what it is you guys offer why and a little bit behind behind some of those those releases that you have yeah so right now pretty much only available on right right now is our rye online um you know if you're in georgia our 15 years still floating around a few stores like, like i mentioned before our six and a half year old single barrel is still floating around a little bit jack's up near buford brazelton georgia still has it but um that that's kind of like where we're at what's coming out um you know we we basically we talked about the honey there's some other finishing stuff too coming out but we we, we have some staples uh we have a bourbon that's a little underaged right now. It's a two and a half year old. It's a mash bill. We all, we all know and love. I'm not going to get too deep into that, but we kind of have experimented with it. It's a little too young, hopefully around three and a half years. So hopefully time, this time next year, we're sipping on our bourbon during the holidays, but yeah. we just kind of found some core products that we love and we're going to go from there. And like I said, we're really kind of leveraging around this kind of limited release thing. Um, the honey will be the, the winner of this year. Um, we, we pulled a lot of, we basically pulled a lot of bartenders, um, here in Atlanta and we have a really cool finish coming out in the spring. We're, we're coming out with a mezcal finish. Like wow. we, we basically, I'm a, I'm a big tequila fan. I love tequila during the spring and summer. It gets hot here in Atlanta, kind of bourbon takes a back seat, <laughs> but we, uh, we kind of took, we kind of took a, uh, you know, kind of pulled the audience and it was, we have a mezcal finish. It will be in spring. We have a rum finished. And we have a port finish that will be in a a, a, a a cognac finish 
that will be this time next year. So standard bourbons, um, we're going to keep experimenting as much as we can. Like I said, the, the source market is a little young right now for where it's at. We're buying what we can, but we're not just laying down a bunch of stuff just to do it. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's important. I mean, I think, you know, by, by being transparent, you know, for the longest time, you know, even going back not that long ago, you know, there was, I mean, this, this whiskey industry, I mean, it was so full of shit. It was unbelievable. I mean, there were so many, that's what, that's what you and I are joking around with. Like before yeah. like, we're, we're not a brand that found grandpappy's, you know, moonshine bourbon recipe in the back of a book covered in dust that decided to make our own whiskey. Like we are what we are. Like we, probably won't have, uh, we won't basically, we, we have no plans to distill. Starting to distill right now, three, yeah. $4 million. That would require investors, land, like yeah. basically everything else. That, that, that's not us. Like we have full-time jobs. That's really not where we're going, but so many brands and I won't, I won't bring up any names, but I, I was at a dinner um, February of this year. It's a funny story, Patrick, you're going to laugh at this one. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a prominent brand. We were at dinner with the master distiller and he talked, all about going to the back of a Rick house and finding these 10 barrels of this amazing 15 year old whiskey that he found and how we should never touch the proof and they're perfect and like everything else. And there's two, there's two brand owners at the table. The, uh, they own the same exact brand and we're all sitting there like, sure, sure you yeah. are. And then we basically, we basically called his bluff and BS and everything. And I'll, I'll kind of keep the story pretty PG, but um, they're, they're, there's a lot of BS on the market. And I, and I think a lot of that's finally starting to break its way through. And there's, there's still brands being acquired by bigger companies and we'll still see the BS, but I think the whiskey consumer is a lot more educated you know, especially channels yeah. like this and Instagram and people are just asking a lot more questions. That's what I love so much about the community is yeah. like, people are just asking, like, they're just flat out. Like, where's it from? Can you tell yeah. me what it is? Why should I buy it? And then they're just not yeah. just going into, total wines of the world or bigger stores or that. And it's like relying on, you know, Joe, who's a bourbon expert <laughs> yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Saying, Hey, here, here's yeah. my quota. Buy all of this, this, this yeah. brand that, that I'm supposed to sell. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and, and again, I mean, I, I think it's important, you know, because I mean, I think, you know, when I was like first kind of getting into it and really learning a little bit more, you knew nothing about what it was. Like there was, if, if it didn't have a story on the bottle, like you didn't know what it was, where it came from, hardly anything. So, I mean, at least nowadays, the the transparency, not only on the labels, but by the brand owners, you know, I, I think it's gotten to the point now where, you know, people, you know, and here's one thing, like I'm, I'm always still amazed by the brands, you know, and even some of the big boys who don't ever want to tell you what their mash bill is, it, you know, and I, and that's one thing to me that it's, it's so, it's so mind boggling that I always want to, you know, say like, well, who gives a shit? It really doesn't matter. There's so many variables that play into why your There's whiskey water, tastes. trees, barrels, location. I mean, even if you told me like, yeah, let, let, let's call Buffalo Trace out. Let's call them out. That's fine. You know, yeah. like even if you tell me what your OWA or your weeded mash bill is, yeah, I can go copy that. That's fine. It's not, it's not gonna taste the same. Like, no. it, it's it's really not. Like, I get it. I get why brands do it. But as you as you alluded to before. There, there's only so many mash bills on the market and there's actually, there's only so many good mash bills on the market. We'll leave it at that. Yeah. That it, it's just, it, it's just, it's just where it's at. I mean, I, I, I don't Buffalo trace is one thing. Look, I love them. There's a reason if you look up here, there's would be a bunch of different Buffalo trace products. I, I I'm a, I'm a Buffalo trace fanboy. Always will be. It's where I got my start, but I, I don't know why a big brand like that, like Heaven Hill, you know, other other brands are fully transparent. Yeah. Why they just won't basically say what it is? Copy yeah. it, great. You're never, you're not going to make what it is. You're, you're, yeah. you're never going to do with their price point, anyways. Even even if you wanted to make the same exact thing, they would admit that every barrel has its own unique characteristics to it, 100%. anyway. So so what difference does it make if I know that you've got a ninety five five whatever rye mash bill? like that same barrel will taste potentially different than the I mean, one right how next many, to it. How many samples, how many samples have you tasted of the same exact mash bill? And you're like trash, good, decent. And you have that yeah. trash one. That's the same exact age could be yep. a four or two lower or higher, like whatever. And you're just like, yeah, how does even make it through a tasting panel? Yeah. Well, I think that goes, I think that comes back to when you're doing all these barrel picks, you know, and you're going through several barrels and they're from, let's say, all over the place, same mash bill. And you're like, yeah, trash, trash, good, 
okay, not so good, good. And and th that's just the reaction of that whiskey in those barrels, you we know? Picked, so. We were at, we had a dinner last Monday night. We, we got back to our hotel in Louisville and we ended up doing an old, old Forester barrel proof pick in the, in the hotel kind of lobby bar area. And like, but it was funny though. Two of them were so bad. You know, them. You're like, these are going to be bad. We taste them. It's almost like spit out. So yeah. we ended up picking one that was really good. It was the middle selection. It was the high tier, you know, decent proof. But like we let the bartender taste them and she she actually liked like the one that was so bad. We're all like, how? And then she started bringing yeah. all these things up and we tasted it like again. I'm like, no, not going to happen. But it's so yeah. it's so interesting to just kind of see people's different palates of like, yeah. you know, will, will we ever say our palates are professional? I mean, I think they're good. They, they yeah. But is anybody ever going to be professional palate taster or whatever? No, absolutely yeah. not. We always have room to learn. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, at the end of the day, this is all, this is all subjective. However, well, I mean, well, however, I, I, you're gonna like. yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I, and, and I think with that being said, even as subjective it is, as it is, I think a lot of people who have tasted a lot, a lot of whiskeys have a little bit of a kind of that, that portfolio in their mind of things that they've tasted and they know what they like and what they don't. So I think that comes into play. So you have a good idea of maybe what, what works well for me or what you think based on what you're tasting other people will like. So I think that's where what you guys do, I think is important for people buying your whiskey is that you have that, that benchmark for no, nah, this is not good. We're not going to put this in, or this is good. And we want to offer this to our customer. Yeah. No, I you know? So I think that's, that's an important thing is knowing who and, and why and what and everything behind the, behind the brand. So, um, so that's, that's pretty awesome. So, all right. So we're, we're about 50 minutes in, I guess, why don't we talk a little bit about maybe, you know, where the brand is going, some things coming up and, and kind of what the future holds for uh, for short barrel. So the, the future's bright. Um, you know, you know, one thing that if anybody's tuning in right now, we, we we've kind of learned a lot of different things of, you know, a lot of people want to be involved, not necessarily in short barrel, but the whiskey world. Um, we actually have an investment company, opening up, up, opening up soon. Um, basically we, we, we're, we're looking for investors, not necessarily in short barrel, but basically we're looking to lay down a bunch of different barrels, not on new make one, two, three year old type things, offering returns. The short barrel will have first right on kind of like basically let help us grow our brand. You know, we're, we're three guys, personal finance, but that's a, uh, you can DM me, DM me. We can talk more about that, which the brand as a whole, we're just, we're expanding. Uh, we're looking at different states. We've taken a lot of different calls. Um, I think you'll probably see us in states that are surrounding Georgia here pretty soon. Uh, we have talks in South Carolina, Florida, Tennessee. We've taken calls all the way up from New York, New Jersey. But our biggest thing right now is it's glass, um, you know, supply yeah. chain issues. That that's that's one of the biggest things that I would probably lead into is like it's you just saw I'm kind of you kind of just saw my face and my neck and everything like you yeah. know the conversation we have glass is tough like even for the honey we had a, we had the rye you have in front of in front of you is our standard glass we actually had to change our glass for the honey because we guys just couldn't get that glass right now really uh, and yeah it's uh it's been very challenging but that's that is one thing I've heard that gla getting glass is a uh, is a tough a tough feat right now so. uh, I was actually on a pick about six weeks ago at Jack Daniels of all places one of my favorite places to pick at. Um, but even sitting with the master distiller there, he's like, I can't get glass. So hearing that is is terrifying. But, you know, just as a brand, you know, continue to grow, continue to kind of expand, you know, our horizons and everything. We we we, we kind of, you know, took a step back and saying, hey, you know, rather than jumping into a bunch of states right now, let's really focus on the Atlanta market. Very fortunate that we've been able to really kind of make a name for ourselves here and kind of expand out. Um, you know, Patrick put a really cool map together recently for us. I think we're about in 170 stores, uh, almost 100 restaurants here, just in Atlanta, kind of metro. So just kind of expanding there. Um, online presence will always be huge for us. Very fortunate to have kind of shipping partners and really kind of just growing. And really, we really kind of kind of fly where we're at and really experiment. And we got a lot of things laid down and, um, you know, just kind of tasting the whiskey and just kind of seeing yeah. what's out there more than anything. That, that's good. I mean, I think that that allows for, you know, kind of that, that revolving door to, to constantly spin, you know, letting you guys keep you on your toes a little bit and, you know, trying some, some fun and different things and, 
you know, testing the market, so to speak, what works, what doesn't, you know, all of that. So, I mean, that's, that's important, I think, for a brand like what you guys have. Yeah, I mean, necessarily brands too, like the whiskey market as a whole, I mean, barrels are getting expensive, um, you know, for what we paid for our six and a half year old versus what a two year old right now, which you never believe they're the same exact price. So it's kind of yeah. just, it's hard to believe within 18 months, how the bourbon market's changed. And, you know, you have, believe it or not, you have major hedge funds getting into this game. You have those guys buying up barrels left and right and clearing out, you know, MGP warehouses and different bigger brokers and just kind of sitting on stuff. So I got, like we talked talk about earlier, the bourbon game's just changing. I mean, it, yeah. it really truly is. Next year is going to be rough. It's, it's going to be rough for us and be rough for a bunch of other brands too. It's just like, it just it, it it is i hate to say it but yeah. it just kind of is what it is at this point it, it kind of sucks but we're also going to get through it together that's a that's kind of a good point i guess i never really thought about that from the standpoint of of there being you know groups of people out there who understand what's going on they're willing to bite the bullet and buy this stuff for what it is now knowing that in six months or a year you know they can maybe put another you know 30 percent on that barrel and now try to sell it so i mean the trickle down effect is well we all know what that is you know that yeah, means there are there are major brands and I'm, i won't mention any names there are major brands coming on lines with three like second third fourth labels in 2023 that are basically just crushing the source market right now buying up anything they can because they can they're they're backed by big money and big hedge funds and everything but it's it's all going to be interesting product and young product yeah. and everything else but i mean does that does that scare does that scare like does that scare you as a as a brand owner who 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 knowing that you don't want to necessarily release two or three year old bourbon like to the point where like we no longer can can get not that we can't get it but like is it is it financially feasible to buy that product and and still be able to remain competitive in in the market so yes and no one thing adam patrick and i are really good at is networking um mm -hmm. you know we have a great network not only the whiskey scene but kind of the business scene and everything else and we we kind of took whisk kind of owning a brand from complete opposites of whether of like hey we're going to go in this thing open book we know nothing which, which 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 we didn't which we learned really quickly we didn't know anything we made a lot of really cool connections in kentucky I mean, Kentucky is a good old boy state and it, whether you want to believe it or is or not. And like, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the guys we talk to and a lot of the brokers we talk to and everything else, like they don't really care. You have a lot of money. I mean, there's, there's hedge fund guys that will throw 10, you know, $10 million at a time and buy whole lots and they'll do it. But like, if you have the connections, which I, I think we're really good at, there's, there's still some good whiskey floating out there. You're going to have to kind of pay a little bit more for it. Yeah. But I think in terms of a brand of our size and where we're at, I think we have kind of a little bit of a leg up just based on connections and, and where things are at that we're super proud of that, yeah. that we've like, I've personally taken my time. I'm a marketing guy, you know, social media guy. I've taken my time of like, Hey, let me help kind of build your brand. And these are bigger brands of saying, Hey, you're, this post should have said X or use these hashtags to do different things. Uh -huh. They're like, okay, like you guys aren't just kind of in it for where you're at. And they'll they'll kind of give us like kind of their you know talk hey go, go talk to this guy over here he'll kind of help you type thing so we've been very fortunate and i i tell these guys thank you every single week when i talk to them or text something like that i'm like just thanks for like thanks for being you basically yeah well i mean that's that's kind of important you know because i i think like you said you know with with certain people you know just because you have a ton of money doesn't always mean that those people are going to be the ones that ultimately get it and i think it does come down to like, I think it's a little bit of like what, what whiskey is like where it's conducive to, you know, shooting the shit, having a good time, you know, you know, being with buddies or family or whatever it may be, you know, and then rolling in with a, a fancy suit and some shiny shoes doesn't always mean that's going to resonate very well with, you know, the guy with, you know, some, some suspenders on holding his damn pants up. No, in, in New York and bigger States it will, but Kentucky, like, I'm telling you, I spent a lot of time in Kentucky. You know, I told you before, I'm from Southern Ohio originally. Like, yeah. you know, that, I hate to say, it, those, are my, those are my people. Like, I, I get it. Like, I understand kind of the, you know, the slowness. And that's one of those things when we launched the brand is like, I'm so like, go, 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 go. Like, why are we not meeting these deadlines? Like everything else. Like, I, I, own, I own different businesses and everything. And I had to take a step back too, personally, of like patience. Like, just yeah. take a deep breath and understand. And like, 
once we kind of figured that out and how Kentucky works, like it, it, it just started opening doors left and right for us and kind of really, um, you know, what, what we're going through, but what we're going through is growing, growing pains like every other startup. And we're not the only yeah. ones like big brands are going through it too. just, just as much as we are. Yeah. Well, and we, you know, and I guess if, if we, if we make it like singular from the standpoint of like, when we were talking before about, you know, whiskey clubs, which obviously, you know, we have, we have the mash and journey and, you know, we're always trying to find not only like fun and different unique things, but again, like for me, like in doing these kinds of live streams for me, I, I like that kind of stuff. Like I like to, to learn more, get to know people, you know, and, and not, not just networking or any of that kind of stuff, but just really kind of getting to know the people behind things because, you know, it's, it's kind of attaching yourself to the people with the brand. And for me, it's important. And I think when you can do those kinds of things, you know, it just, it, it helps everything else that you, that you do. Um, and you just, you, it's just one of those things where you, you try to make it a little bit, you know, personal and, and, you know, and get in with the, you know, some really good people and pick some good whiskey and, and we, Hey, we, we hope to be able to do it with you guys. We're, we're yes, looking like forward that, to that. That was my next challenge to you of like, you know, all the different finishes and blending we talked about tonight. Like if you can ever think of anything in your wildest dreams, like, yeah. you know, l l let us help you. And that goes to the whole community yeah. listening tonight or anybody watching this after, like, if you, if you, like, if you have an idea, like hit us up, like we're, we're willing to lay some stuff down and like do some different things and experiment. Like, I, I want to think of we're one of those guys that are one of those groups that we're, we're still a whiskey picking group just because we have a yeah. brand name. Like let's have some fun. Let, let's play around. Yeah. If it's not good, we'll figure out what to do with it. We, we might take a down deposit or something. Like that. <laughs> yeah. But, but like yeah. if there's things you want to do or try or Hey, like mm -hmm. what's out there right now, like let, let, let's experiment together and kind of like really yeah. build this thing organically versus let us kind of pump some stuff out there that we think's right. You know, I think you and I have talked about some single barrel stuff. Like if you want to say, Hey, let's, let's, let's buy some MGP or buy what's on the market and throw in a cognac cast and let's taste it in a year. Yeah. Let's do it. Like that, that's kind yeah. of one of the things with us is like, we're, we're willing to experiment and do different things. We'll have, you know, we'll have a, a bottling and single barreling and everything else here in Atlanta. We're also going to be in Kentucky too. So we have, we have two really cool spots. Everybody can get to Atlanta airport or Kentucky. We'll meet, we'll meet someone up yeah. there. If you want to experiment? Let's do it. Yeah. And that's, and that's fun. I mean, I, I think that's the, the fun and unique part of it because I mean, you know, and you guys have been on a, a million of these picks, you know, at, at, at a point it becomes a little monotonous, it you does. know, where you're like, you're like, all right, we're going to go pick like more bourbon. We're going to do this. But I think when you can start getting into just exploring even some different options or whatever it may be, and to be able to, you know, do those as a, as a group or a club and, and offer something different and unique, that that's kind of an exciting thing. So. Seriously, get on get on Barrels Direct. Barrelsdirect.com is where we get our stuff from. Like, get on there and look at the amount of different barrel finishings they have. I think they have like three hundred some plus. Like, it's crazy really? that you can never imagine of like, you know, X bourbon cask and Tabasco finish that was finished in wine barrels and like everything that's else. Like, but like, they're not that expensive to experiment with. Like, you know, we we can put some three year old MGP yeah. in a barrel and let it sit for a year, and you know, double finish it or toast it. And like, yeah. I think that's the fun part about Patrick Adam and I is like, we want to have as much fun as as we can with everybody else, just because we think that's kind of that we we want to be able to recreate the barrel picking experience that we've done. It, it yes, is it monotonous sometimes when you go to bigger places? It is, but it's still fun. Yeah, yeah like, it is. Wh why not experiment with each other and like? Ooh, this yeah. is not good or like holy shit we just knocked this out of the park yeah like, and that's a, that's a that's a that's a cool yeah that's an off i mean that's an awesome like option to to even be able to offer to other groups or whatever it may be i mean something different like that do you guys as far as where you are and again i'm hopefully i don't bore people watching right now this is probably getting to the point where i'm my brain is starting to kick in oh, where I'm, I'm like trying, <laughs> i'm trying to like think of other things but um, as far as like doing, doing picks and stuff, are, are all your barrels, I'm assuming not all or any of them are, are even in, in Georgia. No, everything's still in Kentucky right now. Uh, we have a partner that's about to open up in Atlanta here soon. Okay. He's, I mean, he's hit some major roadblocks. He's opened his own distillery, but everything's still in Kentucky. It's all house there. Uh, Bluegrass Distillers is actually our bottler and they're in Lexington. Okay. Um, they're doing a lot of stuff with us. We, we, we are, we will eventually get to the point where, we'll taste our own barrels and kind of anything we 
feel that single barrel worthy. We'll come to Atlanta just because with Atlanta airport and everything and travel, yeah. we, we can do a whole entire experience with dinner and all that other fun yeah. stuff here. But um, everything's still in Kentucky right now, but we're eventually going to lay a bunch of different stuff down here too. All right. So we, so if we could, if we could technically get to Kentucky, we could do some tasting there. Yeah, uh, we yeah. can. Um, like Bluegrass is expanding huge. We were with those guys yeah. last Wednesday morning. They're um, they're opening like a huge, uh, huge like new distillery and warehouse in Midville. Or Mid, 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 I think it's Midville. Yeah, um, or Midtown, Kentucky, um, about fifteen minutes outside of Lexington. So we'll we'll always have a home there. We have other homes in Gerard County and other stuff too. Some other friends here in Atlanta. But yeah. we're going to be spread out. But I think a majority of our stuff that's single barrel worthy will be pulled here in Atlanta. It's just easier for us, easier for everybody to get here. I think travel's a little bit cheaper to get here. Too. Yeah, yeah. And the food's great and everything else. Yeah. No. Well, hey. Um. I. I guess before we before we sign off, I guess why don't you let everybody know where they can find you, where they can find Short Barrel, all of that. If people have questions, how they can reach out to to you guys. Yeah, Short Barrel Whiskey on Instagram. Um, it'll be myself, Patrick, or Adam that responds. More than likely, me. I'm pretty quick. Shortbarrelbourbon.com. Um, learn more about uh, myself or the rest of the partners. Uh, also, can buy our whiskey on there. Um, any release we have will be always on Instagram. Uh, bur bourbonoutfitters.com is our shipper. And if you're in Georgia with Empire Distributors, so if you're a store or maybe you just want to learn more, they can order directly from Empire. Awesome, awesome. Well, hey, that was a that was a pretty quick hour right there. Yeah, that's so, that uh, Scott. I appreciate you having us on, kind of like here in the short barrel store, and everybody else paying attention. Yeah. If anybody wants well, to learn more, please hit me up. You know, and that's the thing. That's what I wanted people to kind of you know feel and understand the passion behind a certain brand. And I think this is what resonates with a lot of people is that it's not just a bottle of whiskey. That there's people behind it, and there's people that put their heart and soul into it. And you know, there's there's not so great people that do it and there's some awesome people that do it. And I think that's part of figuring all of that stuff out. You know, you guys are a, a, a group of guys, good guys that, you know, have a brand and you're willing to work with people and transparent. And I think that's, that's a pretty, pretty awesome thing. So, you know, thanks, thanks for, for doing all of that. No, thank you for having us. Appreciate it. You're welcome. So, all right. So, um, you you heard from Clinton, so you you know where you guys can find them. If you have any questions, reach out to them. They'll they'll get back to you and let you guys know that. So um, for uh, for the guys that weren't able to make it on, uh, hopefully next time we'll be able to do another one and shoot the shit. And I'm maybe, down anytime you want to do this. Let me know. We, yeah, we can do this quarterly when we have special releases coming out. I am, yeah, let's let's do I it. Am, I mean, Patrick, I, Patrick and Adam are chatting me right now. Like you know, great job. I know these guys would love to jump on. I'd love the three of us getting here because it get a little crazy. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, and that's and that's fun. I mean, the the more guys you can get in in these things, and the the more passion that comes out, it it, it gets even even better. So you know, I I appreciate everybody for for being on. And yeah, let's do it. I mean, if you guys have you know, anything, yeah, if you ever want to talk about something or you've got a release and you want to do it, then let's let's do it. I mean, it, it's, I mean, I can, I can adjust my schedule pretty, pretty no, easily. To, I, I, as I told you, you were the first time we've been able to do this. Like, you know, I'd love to kick things off with you and, you know, just presence on YouTube and Instagram and everything. Like, just consider us family at this point. You're a part of short. Yeah. We'll, we'll welcome you to the family. And we'll go from there. Let's, let's do it. Let's do it. So uh, yeah. Hey, I appreciate it. All, all you guys for joining tonight. Hopefully you got a little something out of this. You learned a little bit more about, you know, what they are, what's behind the brand, all of that. To me, that's a, it's an important thing. So that's one, one of the things I wanted to, to kind of, uh, you know, relay to, to you guys. So uh, Clinton, everybody watching tonight, thank you so much for, for joining. And uh, it, <laughs> it won't be the last, it won't be the last time we do this. this will not be the last time you see my bearded face on my bearded No, bearded. that, it, that it won't. So guys, thanks for, uh, thanks for joining tonight. Uh, stay tuned and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see everybody next, next Tuesday. Cheers guys. Cheers.